So today we are reacting to Funky Frogbait and her video, Van Life Parents Are Abusive. Are you feeling trapped at your nine to five? She's a super hilarious and very descriptive person. Is this smoggy old city harshing your hash browns and ruining your sweet succulent vibes? And I enjoyed watching her video. She brings on some truths that I think people need to be aware of, be open to talk about. And a lot of van lifers, and I'm saying van lifers, we're gonna lump in van lifers with kids, people who move their families to different countries, people who are world schooling and moving frequently. Like we're just gonna encompass all of that. All of us that participate in this crazy travel lifestyle with our kids, we're gonna lump them all together and we're gonna address some of the concerns that Funky Frogbait mentions. I have actually no idea what her real name is. So we're gonna call her Funky from now on, shall we? But one thing I do want to mention as a van lifer myself, all the examples that she and and other YouTubers who are not part of van life and also not part of RV life and often not parents, they always say van life parents, but the examples they tend to bring are actually YouTubers who are not living in vans with their children. They're living in trailers, they're living in schoolies, they're living in much larger vehicles than an actual van. So again, just as a van life parent, part of me is like, listen, could you, could you start saying RV lifers? Cause that's a little more accurate to what you're saying. That being said, she brings on some interesting points that I think is worthy of discussion. And so real quick, hey guys, I'm Anne. My childhood, and I am the oldest of five, we've literally been moving since I was two years old. From a childhood perspective, I really know nothing but being the new girl in a new location. I'm new, I just moved here. And at the end, I enjoyed the travel life so much that when I became an adult, I also joined the military so I can travel. After retirement, I bought this RV and I still continue to travel initially in this RV but my son and I just came back from a three-year stint in Mexico so we I just I've always moved I've always traveled it's what I enjoy it is not what all my siblings enjoy so not all five of us enjoy travel life and certainly I'm the only one that enjoys kind of more constantly moving right everyone enjoys vacation life I'm the only one that enjoys travel life does that kind of make sense Anyway, so that's the perspective that I'm starting at with this conversation is that I have in fact traveled as a child. I still travel as an adult and my child has traveled with me that entire time. He is now 13. So the very first point that Funky Frogbait has mentioned. Uproot them from their barely established social circles and destabilize the entire structure of their education and shove those little <laughs> into a shelving unit so you can go on your magical journey of self-discovery. Legitimately, that is probably the biggest obstacle you're gonna have to deal with. And depending on your child and depending on you, depending on your parenting style and the particular van lifestyle you try to do. And again, we're saying van life, but I'm encompassing RV life in general, travel life in general, depending on the style that you choose and they're all different, no two RVers are alike, will have a different impact on you and your family. This is why some people do part-time travel life, some people do full-time travel life, and others refuse to travel in anything less than 40 feet. Like it's, they do it because they do take into consideration their family. And so I've met many parents and many travelers in general who chose travel life as a way to kind of escape the normal. And Funky, along with other YouTubers, have definitely implied there's a selfish to that there's a selfishness of I just want to travel so my kids have to come with me it just boils down to selfishness at the end of the day the kids being an accessory the kids being something that you shove into these tiny coffin style racks and I can see on the surface how it might look that way but I'm gonna counteract that not only for myself but the parents that I've met who have chosen RV life travel life road schooling world schooling whatever name we want to call it for most of those parents the, the catalyst, the thing that made them actually do this life was their children. Not necessarily that their kids asked for it, but more a fear that their kids will not know how to change, will not know how to improve their lives, will not know how to take advantage of all that is out there for them if they don't experience an alternative lifestyle. People start travel life because they have kids, because they want more for their kids. This is by the way, not to suggest that if you have a more traditional life that you're not doing that for the kids also, but I'm just saying that people, especially parents, when we become parents for a significant enough percentage of us, we become better versions of ourselves. We want to be better than we were when we were single. Guys, there were so many things I tolerated in life. So many things I tolerated in life when I was standalone when it, when it was just me or when it was just me and my husband there were so many things that i just let slide but it was becoming a mother it was becoming responsible for this other life 
that it kind of opened my mind to, oh, I need to lean in and acknowledge the things that really matter to me and make sure those are front and center because I want better for my child than I want for myself. So yes, on the surface, maybe it looks like some RV lifers are shoving their kids into cubby holes while they travel the world. When in reality, it's just really difficult. It is logistically difficult to find an RV to fit three, four, six kids. It's difficult, but if their priorities are such that they want to introduce travel life to their kids, that they want this lifestyle to feel normal and regular for their kids, they're going to do that. Does that kind of make sense? Like you're, they're going to find, they're going to just make it happen. So whether the kids sleep on the floor or on a couch or wherever, like the priority is not how comfortable is my kid? How many possessions do my kids have? The priority is the travel. The priority is the seeing different lifestyles. The priority is the freedom. I obviously cannot speak for all our viewers, but just in my travels, I have met a significant portion of parents and a significant portion, quite frankly, of single parents, single moms. Their reason for travel with their kid is varied, but often it is about improving their quality of life for the family not just a selfish, I can't do it anymore, but more, and I can't do it and let my kids see me doing that anymore. I need to do better for us, not I need to do better for me. Just throwing that out there, that is the impetus for why people travel and why people travel even with their kids. It is also why I know many, many parents who are choosing to wait until their kids are in college. Some people wait till their kids are out of college before they start full-time travel life, before they move out of the country, because they wanna be there to support their kids. We've got people on a wide variety of spectrum and to just focus on this, oh, the parents wanted freedom and the kids had no choice. Often the kids were a big equation in the decisions the family makes. Just saying. The second concept that Funky Frog Bait mentions is the idea of having a bed slash privacy, having a bedroom slash having a proper bed. Now this situation is especially concerning. Come check out the kids' bunk room. We finally finished and they got curtains. Ah yes, nothing says privacy like a sheet of fabric that can block neither light nor sound. So as a traveler, all I will say is from a very American perspective, it is the norm for every child to have their own bedroom, to have their own bed, to have a lockable door so they can do them. That is a very American standard that we have had for decades. It is not a standard worldwide. There are many, many countries in which siblings share rooms where not only siblings share space, but cousins and aunts and uncles. And, like, and so it's a very American concept that everyone needs their own room and everyone needs their own everything. Everyone needs their own phone. They need their own laptop. They need their own TV. Like one of the things that we know as travelers is it's not the norm everywhere in the world. And once again, the purpose often of traveling is to experience other cultures, to experience how other people live and to just get a taste of it, to see what it's like on those sides. Especially as the oldest of five kids, my family has never had a six bedroom home in our travels. I have often shared a room with at least one of my siblings, often sharing a bed, like a queen size bed with my sister and getting privacy, which I do think is important for everyone, especially as an introvert. There are multiple ways to do this. And in RV life, a lot of that will include some members of the family like to hang out outdoors. Other members of the family like to hang out indoors. Some members of the family like to go out on a little walk by themselves, on a trail by themselves. Now, obviously this depends on what age you are, but I can tell you that the younger the child is, the less likely they care about privacy. My son as a toddler literally followed me around like a puppy dog. It was adorable, but there was no privacy for either of us. And I can tell you of the two of us, he was not the one that cared. So, so I get it. Outside looking in, it might seem cruel that a child does not have their own bedroom. I just wanna say, one, it's not always realistic, which Funky does mention. If a family due to poverty is forced to resort to a living situation where the children have very limited space and privacy, that is totally understandable. And I appreciate that she mentions it. You know, I feel like it shows a lot of awareness and maturity on her end, but is there an expectation that as my income increases, as my net worth increases, as I become more wealthy, if I become a millionaire, are we suggesting that the goal in life is for me to get a bigger house? Do I need to get a bigger rig just because I can afford it? Do I need to travel first class just because I can afford it? Many people will say, if you have the money for it, why would you not get the better item? 
them? Why would you not get the better house, the better car, the better television, the better clothing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's a common belief, but I would argue that the quality of my life is not necessarily the accumulation of possessions and, and real estate, et cetera. The, the quality, like I lean on the minimalist side. I wouldn't say I'm actually minimalist, but I lean on having less possessions because it brings me peace to have less possessions. And so this belief of if you have money, then of course every child needs to have their own room is inherently wrong. It's this belief system that if I have money, I have to live like one of the real housewives of Beverly Hills. And no thank you. What? No thank you. Part of embracing different ways of living is first identifying the things that matter to you. And so for me, I enjoy the freedom of being able to travel. I enjoy the freedom of being able to just go in my car, go wherever, sleep in the back, not have to worry about finding a hotel that I like because I brought my house with me. I, I think this is a great lifestyle. If anyone wants to give me a million dollars to see if I'll actually stick to that, please go ahead. But I'm pretty confident that even if I get a huge windfall, I enjoy this travel life so much and I enjoy having a small rig in particular so much, it's not gonna change. Other things might change. There are places I'd like to go that are more costly and so that could change, right? Where I go might change. This expectation of, if you have money, you have to do this. No. Now I do concur children, while they do tend to be a little more limber than let's say a 45 year old woman, they do still need a proper bed. The YouTuber that she mentioned where the children are sleeping in coffins, I believe, and I don't follow this YouTuber necessarily, but the kids were very small when they lived in that space. And over time, they got a larger space, uh, which Funky mentioned. And while Funky implies that it's because of all this external, everyone yelling at them because they put their kids in these small coffins, maybe that was a part of it, I do not know. But also in travel life, in being a parent, you will make changes. You, you, like, we're talking about families here and families are not just the parents, families include the children. So as an example, when I retired from the military, my son was nine and I bought this RV and we started RV travel life. We had these two small twin beds. Obviously my son was much smaller than he is now when we lived in it. We loved it, we enjoyed it. Special place in my heart. Then we moved to Mexico. I got a studio apartment. Alex actually slept in the bed. I slept in a hammock for a year and a half, which is a lot more comfortable than you might imagine. But when we were getting ready to move again to a different place in Mexico, my son specifically requested his own bedroom. At this point he was almost 12. And so when we moved to the next location, I made sure he had his own bedroom. When we moved back to the States, my son was very clear he does not want to move back into the RV and therefore at best we're part-time RVers. Normally my son and I sleep in beds in a house and so I use this RV more as a mode of transportation than as a place to live and sleep because I'm taking into consideration the needs of my son because it's true I think teenagers go through a phase where they want more privacy than they used to and they're going to start vocalizing that with their parents and the parents are going to make decisions based on the best interests of the family. Does that kind of make sense? So, so when you take a snapshot of a family, it might be that they're living in an RV. It might be that they're living in a van. It doesn't mean they're always doing that. And one of the things about travel lifers just in general is travelers will change not only where they travel to, but how they travel, what they bring with them, what they don't bring with them. I'm confident you probably know more RVers that have changed their RV vehicle for a variety of reasons, then you do people who have literally been in the same RV for more than five years. A perfect example of this is the try and something new family. They have been doing this RV life for seven years. The class A that they chose, they chose specifically because they felt the ride would be much more comfortable for the kids. They had their three small kids sleeping together in a gigantic, bigger than king size bed that they custom made in the back for them. As the kids got a little older, they created bunk beds so the kids aren't quite as close. And then the parents slept in the living room on the pull out couch. And now that the kids are teenagers and basically the size of the parents, they're gonna be moving into a fifth wheel, which compared to a class A is dramatically larger than their original class A home where the kids can have much larger beds and the parents can have their own room with a soundproof door to once again, increase some of that privacy for the kids. The fifth wheels really come in handy for a family. You just have that extra space to work with. When you close this door right here, it is 100% soundproof and sealed proof. So you can't hear the kids back here doing whatever they're doing. As parents, it is our pleasure to accommodate our lives around our kids. We absolutely know the differences between the lifestyle we love and the lifestyle our kids love. And if there's a conflict between them, it is our pleasure to figure out the best option for the family, which is not always doing what the kid wants but it is also not always doing what the parent wants. The travel life I would lead if I had never had a child 
would be infinitely different from what you see now. And I am definitely not the only one to do so. And I know this because everywhere I go, I seek out other people who have children so my son can play with them. And therefore I meet a lot of travelers with kids. Okay, can we just quickly go back to when Funky said, uproot them from their barely established social circles and destabilize the entire structure of their education and shove those little <laughs> into a shelving unit so you can go on your magical journey of self-discovery. If you've been following me at all, you know that one of the things I liken travel life to are rehab centers. Like I really do think one of the benefits of seeing how other people live, one of the benefits of going to a place that maybe doesn't have drinkable water coming out of the faucet, going to a place whose definition of a toilet is literally a hole in the ground is to help you get out of the rut, out of the habits, especially the negative habits. When we tear ourselves from the norm, from the regular society, sometimes we're tearing people away from bad situations. So when kids get pulled out of school to be homeschooled, to sometimes just go to a different school, sometimes to travel, et cetera, et cetera, etc. I would say more often than not, it is to take their kids out of either an actual negative situation or a perceived negative situation. Sometimes to avoid the craziness that happens in schools today. It might appear to the child and to outsiders as if we're taking kids away from their normalcy, taking kids away from the life they've always known. This idea that it's done solely because the parents want better just for themselves, no. And so sometimes it is a good thing, not only for the parents, but for the kids to take them out of their normal environment. It's not for everyone, but it is for some. I loved her video. I think she articulates a lot of points that people who don't travel and people who also probably don't have kids will say. And so it's good to hear these things, but sometimes when you judge other people's parenting styles, it could be that you don't know the entire picture. And so often, whether we're talking about full-time travelers, people who move to different countries, road schoolers, homeschoolers, whether they travel or not, a lot of these decisions are made with the best interest of the child at heart. I'm not saying we always succeed. I'm not saying we never make mistakes, but with the intent of taking care of our kids, being front and center. One of the worst first world problems, if you will, is the fear of not having all the accommodations you're used to and having that fear be so strong that you won't do the things you want to do. Like, like you let it stop you from even testing out and trying the life of your dream. So van life with kids, not for everyone. Moving to Mexico with kids, not for everyone. Do what you think is right for you and yours. Every kid will respond differently to travel life. And so we do need to take that into consideration. And that's what you're gonna do anyway. We take our kids into consideration especially for these major, major decisions. Van life, it's not a blanket, everyone should do it, but it's also not a blanket, everyone is abusive just because we make our kids live an extraordinary life instead of an ordinary one.